If I'm not blunt other weeks, I'm going to be blunt this week. And I think it's something that we all need to um, step into. You know, I talked about responsibility uh, this month and um, that that should be a, a, an impartial uh, a responsibility without an agenda, a responsibility idea without getting into a witch hunt. But let me get into what I want to talk about today. Talk title is Universal Neutrality and You. So, shocking as it may sound, and blasphemous as it may seem, it is still true, and here we go with the bluntness, God does not care. God does not care. Now, that doesn't mean God doesn't love you or me or anyone or anything else. For God is all love, unconditionally, without judgment. God is in everything, working through everything, as everything, with pure, unconditional love. You think your puppy dog has unconditional love for you? That's nothing compared to what the divine, the power, and the presence, love, light, whatever you want to call God, has for each and every one of us. The good versus bad stuff, the positive versus negative stuff, the love versus hate, or, or the good versus evil stuff, that's conditions. That's, um, like I, I like to say, flavors of the human condition, the human idea, not of God. God doesn't get into evil or love. God just is. And God doesn't care what we do, what we did, what we have or haven't done. God doesn't even care what we will do. God leaves that up for us, each one of us individually, to decide all of that. It is our beliefs along with our thoughts and our feelings, our imagination, all the things I talk about that God works with, that the universe works with, that the law works with through this spiritual law of cause and effect that we are constantly talking about, which brings out our life experiences into, fruit, into fruition, into form, into an experience. God uses its power to manifest those things which mirror our beliefs. So the law, the universe, God is taking those ideas which we reflect out and mirrors those into our lives. And it's done for me, it's done for you, it's done for the Christian, the Jew, the Muslim, the atheist, the liberal, the conservative, for all living things. Plants, animals, even the planet itself are progeny of this energy which we call God or some other term. The important thing to know is that God doesn't care about what you may want, desire, or require, because if you believe you can have it the way the universe works, you can and you will. You see, the universe is pure potentiality. It doesn't judge. It doesn't opine about what it is you have decided to have in your life. It's always listening. It always is giving. And it does it with more love, with a capital L, than you can ever imagine. Because what you believe, God and the law, accepts as what you want to have in your life, whether that is good, bad, or indifferent, according to what humans um, term things. God is all love. And yet, God doesn't care what you think. But you should. I should. You still with me? <laughs> good. Because I don't want you to be afraid of this. 
I don't want you to be afraid of this being responsible for this principle. Because being responsible for this principle shouldn't be a scary thing. It should be an empowering thing. It should be an exciting thing. Like the universe, I am not here to scare or judge you. I am here to empower you. Well, pff, not that you really require empowering because you're already empowered by the power that made it all, created it all. God, you are already vibrating if you so choose, at the speed of that divineness that you are. Now, I know it's, it's, it's tough to hear some of this stuff. It's tough to hear that you're responsible for your experiences, through your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs, good and bad. But I urge you to remove any shame, blame, or guilt from your mind and heart about that crap that may be or have been in your life, because that is not what being responsible about this, in, the experiences, experiences in your life is about. That's not what the responsibility stuff is about. It's not about being responsible. Oh my gosh, I, I did that, uh, this or another, or I believe this, that or another before and look at my life. It's not about that. You may go through those thoughts. But that's not what being responsible really is about. This is not about it going on a witch hunt into your thoughts and beliefs to find out what brought crappy things into your life. This is about being or becoming neutral about those past thoughts. Remember, I talked about witnessing your reactions to things and your reactions to things many times are triggers from past beliefs, from old stories, from junk ideas. This is about being neutral about those past thoughts and reminding you that the power within you is there to turn all that around. If you so desire to do that, right on a dime. You can do that right on a dime. To focus on the now, to be here now, like the song said. To imagine and believe the better place the best idea, the optimal condition. That's all there. That's the power you have to focus on the now and know that as you're focusing on that, that best idea, that optimal condition right here, right now, that that's what's going to show up in the next second or the next day or the next year, whatever you have decided. There is a saying in New Thought that principle is not bound by precedent. And that means, corny but true, today is the first day of the rest of your life. So how are you going to use it? How am I going to use it? We have to decide right here, right now. Are you still with me? <laughs> even now, even after all that? Well, good. Good. Let's explore and reveal our power for good. And by the way, I totally realize, and it's probably not something I'm supposed to say, but I totally realize you've heard this stuff before. But are you doing it? Are you doing it deeply, daily, every, every moment? So questions. Who are we? Why are we here? Why are we here? What are we here to do? So who, why, what? Who are we? Why are we here? What are we here to do? Questions pretty much everyone has asked at one time in their lives. I've asked it. I brought it up here probably many times. It's what mythology, philosophy, theology, and, and even science, even many folk tales and nursery rhymes try to answer those questions or one of those questions. And here's my answer. It is our purpose, it is our purpose as human beings, as children of God, as, as individualizations of the divine, to happily and joyfully individualize this power right here, right now, during this lifetime, and to live our personalized earthly experiences for and through our design, divine selves, for and through our divine selves, to vibrate 
at the speed of the divine and reveal that divinity every single day, every single hour. That divinity that is within us right here, right now. We don't have to go anywhere. We don't have to do anything. It's already there. To bust through and soar and zoom into our greatest experiences, no matter what. No matter what conditions are here right at this moment. No matter what conditions are there tomorrow. We can bust through, soar, and zoom through each of them to either upgrade a negative experience or upgrade even more a fabulous experience or continue that fabulous experience. Now, Emmett Fox, of course, put it a little more succinctly. And he said, we are here on earth to express God. And true expression is what we call demonstration because it demonstrates the law of being. Now, the law of being is that part of God within us as us, always there with us, showed up right when we were conceived and stays with us. Well, it was there before we were conceived, actually, and stays with us after we decide to depart from this body. Again, God doesn't care what we demonstrate or attract into our lives in this beingness. It is only concerned that we do it in mind first and believe it's happening. That's all it cares about because it, it is unconditional love. The universe has a neutrality to what we have decided to bring into our lives. The universe just deals with the hows. You know, that's a, such a great thing to remember. We don't have to deal with the hows. It, the, the universe has set up this beautiful scientific system for achieving these uh, hows. Because the how, how, how the... Uh, the manifestation you have decided to have, how it's going to come together and show up in your life. Oh, yes, you take action. And that action, if you're listening well, will come through your gut, your intuition, and tell you, oh, I need to take action. I need to make this phone call. I mean, need to write this letter. I need to do that, this, that, or the other. I need to exercise. I need to call. I need to whatever. That is part of the law informing you through its work on the how, what you need to do to assist in the co-creation of what it is you've decided to have. And it directs you through the power of your mind with the what. The what. The what is what you decided to have. What is it you decided to have? What have you decided to have? That's the idea that the universe is going to work with to create the house to bring that idea into form, as they say, or into your experience. Your thought, your idea is backed by a feeling or feelings, which then develops that idea into a belief, into a knowing. And the law reads that, the law hears that, however you want to phrase that. And it does its how, how thing, whatever that is, and then it manifests this belief into your experience. That's how it works. That's how it works. That is what God is all about, God and the law. Now, our word is very important. Our word is the cause. Our word, and this is a word with a capital W. It's not one word. It could be several sentences. Our word is the idea. Our word is our is our imaginative use and creation of this idea in our mind and thus in our belief system. Our word is the igniter. Our word is the paint or the clay which goes into the law, which then creates the conditions to produce that thing or experience that idea that you want, that you have decided to have. Even the Bible tells you that stuff. Yeshua said, therefore, I say unto you what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Does ye get it? It's so exciting. It's so exciting to know how this universe works and how we can work it. We're here to work it, baby. And you may not like but when things go rotten or when people are bad 
It's the same spiritual law, the law of cause and effect, or the law of attraction, or the law of, you know, this goes by many names, but the law of cause and effect. It's the same spiritual law working for them as when they are pure and righteous or things are going great. Why? Because God doesn't care. What do you think? God is neutral about these ideas. You want to bring, bring crappy things into your life? Believe crappy things are going to come into your life. I can hear it now because <laughs> I'm being so blunt. This guy is out of his cotton mind. This is the work of the devil he's talking about. Must be um, Beelzebub speaking through him right now. Well, think as you will because it affects me not. And why? Because I believe what you think of me is none of my business. And like the four agreements tells us, I don't take the time to take things personally. So if you want to believe that, have at it. I can safely say this because I know that only my thoughts, my opinions, my feelings, and ultimately only my beliefs can affect my personal experience. God is just wait, waiting to hear what I, and you of course, in your life want to do or want to happen. It waits for the idea and then accomplishes it impersonally, impartially, with neutrality, and with the most care, and most importantly, with complete love. It's complete love because God believes that you believe that you want that. The only evil possession is the one you have decided to embrace. You want to be possessed? Go for it. You want to be exorcised from some possession? Ask. Better yet, believe. And it shall be done. And it should be done through your conscious use of the infinite power that resides within and cannot ever, 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 ever be removed from you. And that is God. The unconditional, loving God, the divine, Phil, whatever you want to call it. Now, I'm not advocating for anybody to have evil thoughts or deeds. Of course not. That is not a loving universe. And we live in a loving universe. And if you want to play opposite games in the loving universe, then that's what's going to come back to you. Have at it. I'm not advocating either thoughts or deeds, and nor is God by being neutral, nor is God by its neutrality. God is for good and God is all love. Good and love will always prevail in the end. Why? Because that evil person, that evil experience will be over. It'll end. It'll go away. Maybe the person will die or move away or get bored with you. You decide for your life the percentage of evil each the per percentage of positive life experiences or negative life experiences. I know this stuff's hard. I know this stuff can seem hard. And, and I get it because when, um, you know, dumb things happen in my life, you know, I'm like, well, who asked for this? I certainly didn't consciously ask, ask for this, but something in my belief system allowed that negative experience to show up in my life. And I need to figure out what I need to focus on so that doesn't happen again. Like, you know, you want a new car, better your, your relationship with your family or whatever, find that dream job made or house. You believe it, you will achieve it. There's another saying in not just new thought, but other other modalities, believe it, and you will achieve it. God wants that for you. God will provide that for you, but only to the degree that you have decided to believe it. And don't feel bad when something shows up that got filtered through your belief and not quite how you believed it. It's okay. You can change your focus and have things come out better. 
Because if your thoughts and beliefs fall on the life sucks and I suck in it, I never have fun or money or love or anything good in my life or some version of that, in its neutrality, God will be most accommodating in providing that experience for you. So watch your words. Watch your self-talk. Watch what sneaks in when you're in meditating or in prayer. Because to the universe, that is the good with what they call the capital G versus good, which is a positive experience that you desire. It's all good to God. It's all love to God. And, and the universe just wants to provide, wants to experience a fabulous life through what you have decided is a fabulous life, whether that's positive or negative or some combination. Let me close with this. What do I mean by this title, by this talk title, Universal Neutrality? and you, the power, your power is in your word. And I use the word, the term word in a capital W, meaning what you say to yourself, your self-talk, what you, what you say to yourself about your beliefs. And God doesn't care the word you speak, but you should. Because through its neutrality, the universe listens and co-creates through its unconditional love. What it is have you have decided to focus on, imagine in your life, and feel and believe is true. And then eventually that shows up in your life. So choose your words wisely. Choose your beliefs wisely. Choose what you focus on wisely, oh powerful one. Because I can't wait to see what you have in store for yourself next. Thank you so much. Namaste.